Happy, happy new year! <laughs> I can't believe it's already like January 10th. January 10th. January 11th. It's already the 11th. Crazy. Is it okay for a Christian to date a non-believer? What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel called By Grace with Fiona Okwado. My name is Fiona and what I do on this platform is I talk about the goodness of God. I make Christian videos for the God-fearing millennial to encourage you guys alongside your walk with Christ. And so today, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about dating someone who is a non-believer. Okay, and I feel like I could talk on this topic because I have experience doing that. I remember a few years back I was in a relationship where I was dating someone who was not a believer. Um, and I'm going to be teaching from my experience as well as the Word of God why I personally believe it's not a good idea to date outside of your beliefs. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of context. So back in 2018, I was in a relationship with a guy who actually wasn't that bad. Like he was a really great guy in terms of he had a lot of the qualities that I'm looking for in a man. Um, he, you know, pursued me. He treated me really, really well. And so I, in my mind, I don't consider him to have been a bad guy. It's just we were not compatible in the sense that our beliefs were different. And I felt like, well, this is great. Like, I mean, this is someone who's interested in me. Um, at the time, I wasn't fully grounded as much as I am now in my faith. And so I think that was also a determining factor in just allowing me to kind of move forward with him. But um, so he called himself a Christian. He was a Christian by association with his parents because his parents were Catholics. Um, but he didn't really display a personal relationship with God on his own. He wasn't like trying to grow. He wasn't trying to mature. He wasn't trying to nurture his relationship with God. It was more like, this is the title that I have as per the association that I have with my parents. Um, and so at the time I felt like, oh, that's cool. I mean, like, it's good enough. I mean, if there's like some kind of pushing or like encouragement that he needs then I'm your girl like I'll encourage him you know it's called missionary dating in the com in the Christian community where you enter into relationship with someone knowing that they're not really Christian um, and they're not really a believer he wasn't born again but I felt like you know my positive influence will get him to uh, know God and give his life to God and and just surrender it to God and all of that so so I found myself um, continuously pushing him to church like you know the first time when I invited him he was totally down he's like hey why not I mean I'll be with you we'll be together we'll take in the service whatever um, and then you know I kept inviting him he never really initiated it and I remember just um, really trying to push even just doing devotionals uh, with him and he wasn't really having it with me after a bit of time I think he was getting worn out by it I think he had already made up his mind of who God was and didn't want to kind of restructure that mindset or shift it to reflect what the Word of God says that God is um, and so I found myself just really feeling um, affected by that and in the end because I valued our relationship more than God I found myself dwindling in my own personal relationship with God so I wasn't as strong in my faith I wasn't as you know productive in terms of reading the Word of God um, I wasn't intentional about worship and praying you know spending that time I wasn't even able to um, like if there were temptations I wasn't able to fight them off because I was not, I was like a disarmed Christian. I wasn't empowered because I had drifted from my first love for God. I had drifted away from my commitment to my father. And so I, I started to see myself not really being authentically who I was created to be. And I felt the, you know, that feeling of like, this isn't right that happens like in your knower, like in your spirit, like you're like, this is not right, but you still go with the flow because it makes sense logically. But in your spirit, it's like, 
something's up, like something's wrong. My priority of being in the presence of God shifted to being in the presence of my boyfriend at the time. And so I feel I, like looking back, I know that I was grieving the Holy Spirit a lot because we had a level of intimacy that was growing and was moving upwards. But now I was kind of like, I, I wasn't encouraged anyway. I was putting something that wasn't of the nature of God ahead of God. So, so the Bible doesn't per se like tackle the issue of dating, but it does say in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, do not be unequally yoked. And there's a reason for that because what fellowship does righteousness have with lawlessness and what communion does light have with darkness? It, it, they don't mix, they don't work very well. And so I'm not against actually being kind of like the encourager in another person's life who is far from God. But when it comes to an intimate relationship like dating and courting and dating so that you can get married, I don't think the idea of missionary, being a missionary in someone's life should be done in, in an intimate relationship like dating. I think like someone else should be able to speak into that person's life and you can pray for them and someone else will come along, speak into their life. Maybe they might open the word of God here and there and learn and grow at their pace. But doing that in, the, in a relationship as sensitive and as important as dating, I don't think that's the place to do it. It ultimately just confuses everything. The second thing that I learned by dating a non-Christian is I learned more about myself. As interesting as that sounds, I may have been going away from being the person God was calling me to, but I was able to realize that and feel kind of like that difference in where I should be, where I want to be. The way I see it is um, when two people who are unequally yoked come together, one person, let's say one person is going north and the other person is going east. If they, the two come together, neither of them are going to be happy because the best it will probably get is northeast. But ultimately, the person going north who has the goal to achieve going north won't be able to achieve that goal. And the person going east won't be able to achieve that goal either. And so it's better for two people to be going north or two people to be going east because they are of one accord. They are working in union, in unity. Uh, in unison. Is that the word? I think it's unison. They're working in unison. And God says where there is unity, he commands a blessing. Don't think you're invincible, that you can make someone change or that you can be this great influence in someone's life. I think that happens by God's providence. And that happens one in a million times. God has outlined wisdom in his truth in the word of God that reminds us as Christians that we need to be careful with who we decide to accompany our to be to choose as our company so the second thing that i learned about myself is that i actually got to learn more about my own values and i was able to see myself for who i truly am and i know it sounds confusing because i was actually losing myself in that relationship because my identity in christ was being lost but it was through that drifting away that I was able to see that, hey, this is actually more important to me than I realized. Like this is something, in short, I was able to look into the future and I was like, well, if we're to have kids, cause something that I would love to have in the future, well, later in the future, right? Later, <laughs> maybe in my thirties, um, is to have kids. I'd like to have some babies. If we're gonna raise these kids together, how are we gonna conduct that? Like, how are we gonna put that into effect? If I'm leaning towards the word of God to guide me in giving me wisdom on how to train my kids and also, you know, the counsel and the ministering of the Holy Spirit in me, whereas someone else is not really looking at that. They're looking at maybe something, a different source, right? Maybe they're looking based on uh, something that's still validated to them, but it's based on maybe other human beings thoughts or, you know, other things, you know. Like, it's good to have that. I'm not saying, I'm not discrediting other people's ideas on how to parent kids, but I'm just saying, like, I really truly believe in the word of God being the standard of living. Um, it guides me, it equips me, it gives me revelations. Like, it just opens up my mind to be aligned with God's own mind because it's his own word. And so I felt like there would be a lot of rift. Okay, so the last thing that I learned, which actually happened after we broke up, is I was able to really have a lot of time, just quiet time to reflect and to analyze like what went wrong, 
what was it that I could have done better. I guess for the third point, I can't really pinpoint and say like this is what I learned, but I came to realize that I had to establish myself in Christ. I really had to establish myself in Christ. Uh, that was 2018 and now we're in 2021 and I am a completely different person looking back and I have grown quite a bit in just my knowledge of God um, and my faith in Him um, and even just revelations that He's given me through reading the Word and I feel like I'm even more suited for the person that I want to be with because I took that time aside to grow and invest into my relationship with God and He did not let me down. Let me just say that. God has never let me down. He's never forsaken me. He's always been faithful. After our breakup, I was analyzing and I said, hey, I need to plug myself into a community of people who are like-minded because that's the thing that I feel like I had drawn myself away from, a community of church people, people who are also growing in their relationship with God because I need to be rooted in community for me to have accountability to be able to grow right i mean it, it's like a nurturing environment that encourages me to grow in my own personal relationship with god it's other people who were able to be vulnerable with me share their testimonies with me and help me grow that has really helped me to grow in my relationship with god and now i feel like they poured into me now i can pour into you guys and so it's so important to have community so i got to as i was reading the word of god there was a transformation that was happening within me I was able to recite his promises and I was able to believe and grow in my faith based upon those promises that he's given to me. And so now even like as I'm walking in this journey of being single, uh, there was a time when I was not okay with it. But now I just feel like I am really becoming more and more content. Like the contentment is just growing as a byproduct of being within his presence. It's like I can trust him. It's like I know that what's for me is for me. And what he has to give to me is more than I even expect. Like he has something so great. And if I'm willing to wait, and if I'm willing to grow, if I'm willing to, to wait on the Lord, he renews me and he does not disappoint me. He gives me the desires of my heart because I'm aligned with him and, his, and I'm aligned with his will. I don't know if I even got to any point with this message. I just know that I kind of was talking and sharing my thoughts about this. Um, ultimately, the question is not whether it's right or wrong to date a non-believer. The question is why do you even want to do it? If God has given you his very own name and identifies you as himself and he's called you for something so great, wouldn't you want to worship him wouldn't you want to praise him through your marriage as well wouldn't you want to be with someone who is on that same journey why would you want to lose that like as a christian why would you want to let go of the goodness of god for the sake of just being with someone having the title of maybe being in a relationship maybe not have feeling the fomo of it but what about the fomo of not being with god like he's He's the fullness of joy, like he's everything completed. Like when you have God in the picture, you're complete. There's nothing that you're lacking in. He's your providence, he's your redeemer, he's your salvation, he's your encourager, he's your healer, he's your pro, I said providence. He's everything that you need in one thing, in one package. So I don't know why you'd be willing to sacrifice that. And now like going back thinking about when I did that, like, I think it's because I was just not sure of who I was in Christ. I didn't know my full identity in Him. I didn't know that I would be complete in Him. I felt like my completeness was would be fulfilled in being in a relationship. That void that I had in my heart would be filled if I had someone by my side, a physical human being. So that's why I think that Christians should not be dating non-believers. And I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's in the name of Jesus that I believe and pray. Amen. Thank you guys for listening. I hope and I pray that you guys may have just a wonderful time. Uh, Till next time. Bye guys.